Why do you think people give you a lot of backlash for questioning people and having questions? I see it all the time with Charlemagne. If we question something that Kamala Harris did, or question something that Joe Biden did, or, or question somebody uh, that's Democrat did, why do you think uh, our people have so much backlash when you ask so many questions? Well, because I think that they don't realize that they've been manipulated against their own interests. And a lot of it is, you know, when you start telling the truth, you become a problem to the establishment, right? So if you're the military industrial complex and you want people to just kind of sleepwalk into another war, and I'm sitting here telling you that, you know, Pentagon just can't keep finding the trillions of dollars that they send overseas. They've got this budget and they're sending all this money to Ukraine. And then they say, oh, we don't know where all the money went. It's being laundered and it's being sent back to a very small group of powerful people. And so when you have someone like me who's cutting through all of the emotional arguments, you have to turn that person into persona non grata, right? And what better way to do it than to have their own community attacking them and saying that they're you know, pro-white or anti-black. I mean, it's, it's a nonsense things that they say about me. If you listen to what I'm actually saying, I'm sitting here providing a blueprint for black Americans to get ahead because it's time, okay? It's time. We've been doing this for a very long time in this country. Black America, wake up, okay? They don't like you. They don't like us, okay? There's so not, not anti -black. America has. So this was probably the favorite part of the interview um, because Kansas spent a great amount of time talking about how anybody that wants to grow government is your enemy. And I agree because more government growth is just more government control. And I'm not one of those types of people that don't listen. Don't tell me what kind of gun I can buy, how many bullets I can have. I don't know. I don't want that. Just give me my Second Amendment right and get the heck out of my way and pray that I don't ever have to exercise that right on you. Um, she talked about the reason why she probably gets so much backlash is because what better way to do it, if you're, if you're saying something that the masses or the overlords don't like, what better way to do it than to manipulate people into thinking that um, she either hates one side or the other. And, and this, this brings up the point that I wanted to make, why I am on a mission to help people who look like me to choose Christ over color. Because first of all, we just, we just need to have the conversation. If you are a believer, meaning you profess Christ as Lord, you believe that he gave you a new heart and raised you to newness of life from your spiritually dead state to now you've been made alive in Christ Jesus and you've been ju justified by grace through faith. I struggle to understand how you can place your ethnicity above the God of the Bible and the Savior and Lord who purchased you with his own blood. I don't understand how you would side with people just because they look like you, despite the wickedness that they're saying or the wicked things that they are advocating that you support. They we're not choosing Christ over these color constructs. They want you to be pro-black or they want you to be pro-white. What about being pro-team Jesus? Who teaches that we don't show partiality on the basis of ethnicity. We don't do that. If we're one in Christ Jesus, your brothers and your sisters are those who do the will of the father, period. That's who my people are. So when the pro blackity blacks come to my channel saying, you know, you sound like you hate yourself. I'm like, you know what? I do. I hate the sin in me that Christ had to die for. And since he died for that sin, I'm not allowing you to put some yoke of bondage around my neck to force me to think how you want me to think. I am free in Jesus. So I don't have to think how you want me to think. I conform my mind and my will and my emotions to the image of Christ and what that word says that I am supposed to be as a believer. And so since the Lord's done that for me, I know what it's like to have hatred in your heart for people who look like you. It is an oppressive way to be. It robs you of your joy. It, it, it steals any semblance of peace that you might have because you're in a perpetual state of grievance. And that is the issue that I see so many people who look like me are. I just want to tell them, don't you want to be free? I mean, I know we got the Emancipation Proclamation and technically you are free, but you are walking about, walking around with a behavioral noose around your neck, hating people 
that other wicked people told you to hate and not on the basis of anything legitimate. Just because you've been manipulated with propaganda that told you you're supposed to hate this person. Well, I refuse to get on that program. You're not going to find that from me over here. I am on the I am on the side of righteousness and whatever color that manifests itself in the fullness of time. That's the side that I'm on. So the name calling, the ad hominem attacks, they don't work over here and they don't because my identity is hidden in Christ. If you knew, if you knew what he brought me from and the person I used to be, you'd be like, she ain't ain't got time for no bed wench. Uh, a boot liquor, Uncle Tom. Like those names mean nothing to me. All they do is reveal the hatred in your own heart that forces me to love you, my alleged enemy, and to tell you that you need to repent and believe the same great glorious gospel that arrested my heart just a few years ago. So when, when Candace talks about being manipulated and how, you know, they call her names, one thing I will say about Candace, and I don't know where she stands in relationship to her faith. I know she's married to a Roman Catholic. I know she alleges to be a Protestant. What that means to her and what that looks like to her, I do not know. But one thing I will say is that I respect her as an individual because regardless of what everybody else thinks, if she believes in something, she's going to stand on her square. She's going to vigorously defend it. And she's not going to worry about what you think about her and what friends that she might lose along the way. It takes an incredibly courageous person to do that, whether we agree with everything she says or not. It is an admirable quality to have. And this is why I think she is such a unique person for such a time as this. I, I do believe that the Lord has a way of bringing a person to themselves it's a process. Like, I don't know the state of her soul. I don't know if she's been made alive in Christ Jesus. But what I do know is that if the Lord does that for her, she will, she, she doesn't need any of this. She didn't need the daily wire. She didn't need turning point. She is able as Candace Owens, the individual to stand on her own and chart whatever course that the Lord has mapped out for her. Because one thing she's not going to do is compromise what she believes and why she believes it for anybody. And that is something that the Christian should be able to look out, look back and say, hmm, she's a believer that's admirable. If she's not a believer, why am I not like that? Why am I worried about what man can do to me and the fear that I have for someone who can just kill the body. They can't do anything to your soul. We need to be, we need to fear the one who can kill the, the body and the soul. And that is not, that is just the sovereign God of the universe. And so I know I went on that long rant and tangent that had nothing to do with what she was talking about, but I just felt, I felt compelled to bring this back to the gospel because at the end of the day, all of the hatred, whether I receive it in my comments or within this live chat right now, I love you enough as my enemy to say, I will pray for you because that level of hatred in your heart that you have towards someone who doesn't either look like you or that you don't even know, that comes from the evil one. That is, that is not a righteous indignation that you're feeling. It is hatred in your heart and it's sinful and it needs to be repented from.